you know, the top guy at that linebacker position, that's pretty of that's a pretty versatile linebacker. I would have to say right now, Demarquis Gates. He's the returning leading tackler. He had 76 stops last season. You also got Terry Carwell. He's the only returning linebacker to have made a start last season for Ole Miss. That's returning. Then you then you bringing in two transfers. You know, to make the one of the guys that you know I kind of talked about in the story that I wrote earlier was Diedrich Bean Dukes. You know, from our Western Community College. You know, he was originally a commit for Georgia. He was redshirted his first and only season in Athens. Transferred. He went to led led the a community college team to ten wins, and also had 70, 70 some tackles. You know, two interceptions, two and a half sacks. So his numbers are looking good. But when you're going from D two to Division one SEC football. You know, is arguably right now, as many people have said throughout the year, SEC is the, one of the toughest conferences in all of college football. So you, you're stepping into the big boys league, a league that has had a lot of guys taken in the NFL draft, you know, a lot of guys that went on to have awesome careers. So he's stepping in big shoes, you know, for, for a guy like C.J. Johnson, who basically was the – who anchored that, that mid – that middle linebacker position, and then also he was at times he played stinger when he had to. So Gates is real confident. You know, talked to him yesterday. He seems like he's ready to take on the leadership role. He's ready to be the guy and to lead this lead this defense that's really going to need him. They're going to rely heavily on him because this defense is really young. Had you know, Treadwell, the Kandichis of the world. This is the recruiting class that put Ole Miss on the map. What's the mindset of replacing those guys? You know, this is kind of uncharted territory for Ole Miss to have to replace, you know, the, the guys that are going top of the draft, you know, first-round talent. What's the mindset of, you know, a, a freeze in the coaching staff and the, and, the, and the rest of the team of having to finally replace stars? And, you know, we saw this past recruiting season and recruiting class that they're doing it again. Does it start there? Yeah. I mean, you just recruit a recruiting class. ESPN ranked this class that's, that's coming in number four in the country. So, you know, a lot of expectations are, are really around this group that's led by Shea Patterson, you know, Benito Jones, Trey Nixon, you know, the list goes on and on. J J Jaron Street, Devon Penniman, you know, those guys are going to have to live up to what the 2012, 2013 guys, the legacy they left behind, you know, they left a lot behind back to back New years, six day bowls, you know, you finished, top three last year in the West in a, in a tough West at that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy to do, but you know, Dan Warner said himself, you know, he said it yesterday, it's going to be tough replacing Treadwell. It's going to be tough. You know, Womack said it himself, it's going to be tough replacing Robert Condici, <clears throat> Denzel Condici, CJ Johnson. It's going, it's going to be tough. The freshmen as of right now, all of them have said that, Hey, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. With these freshmen, they trying to catch on to the speed of the game. It's they're gradually, they're gradually coming along. Right now, they're they're slow. They're not trying to go fast on these freshmen because they know it's, it's going to be kind of tough on them trying to adjust from high school to D1 football. But you know, from from what I have seen at yesterday's practice and last week's practice, and from what the coaches have said, they're very confident that these freshmen and freshmen that had the red shirt last year are going to catch on. Through this, from now to the fall until first game of the season against Florida State. And I'll hit the, the passing game next. You know, we Treadwell's gone. He was the go-to playmaker. And now coming into this season, are they going to have that one guy they can count on, or is it going to be kind of more spread amongst the wide right receivers as a group? I think they're going to – they're not going to have a number one guy. Um, I don't I don't see that. It's too, there's too much talent uh, on this team this year. Depth wise, this team is real deep at the receiving position. You got Van Jefferson and Demarcus Lodge, who didn't see the field at all last year. Then you bring back Markel Pack. You bring back Streamfellow. You know, those are four receivers right there that Kelly is going to have a field day with if those guys are on the same page. So, it, to me, any of those guys have the capabilities of doing what Treadwell did last year. You know, I'm not going. I'm not saying have a thousand yards receiving in the SEC. I'm, I'm talking about more like being the leader, commanding everyone's attention, demanding double teams. I, I think there, I think Markel Peck or Streamfellow has the capabilities, but I just see Kelly spreading it out, you know, having all four of those receivers, you know, 
he's gonna he's gonna hit all of them a lot. I don't think it's gonna be a standout receiver this year, but you never know. The string fellow, Pack Jefferson, you know, those guys may shock someone, but I don't see it as of right now. First question, going back to position battles, uh, Ole Miss seems pretty set at quarterback. Chad Kelly, possibly the best returning quarterback in the conference. Uh, talk, you talked about the receivers. What about a point of weakness for Ole Miss's offense for the past several years? What are we looking at? at what are we looking like at running back going into the spring? I understand it was Wilkins and Judd uh, expecting to battle it out for the top spot at running back, but I've heard a lot of good stuff about Eric Swinney. Can you talk to us about the running back position uh, from spring oh. practice uh, down in Oxford? Oh yeah, um, you know, Warner Warner mentioned that these running backs he have this year are very physical. They'll run you over. And the number one guy he mentioned, and a lot, Chad Kelly has mentioned him. Uh, Hugh Freeze has talked about him a lot. He's 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 been he's been like the hot commodity right now at the running back position. That's Eric Swinney. You know, he got hurt before the beginning of last season. You didn't see him at all. Whereas this year, he, he's he's really came along. You know, some have been surprised that he's come along this quick after sitting out a full year, not being able to do anything with the football team, not being able to practice. You basically, you basically had to watch from the sideline. Whereas this year, this guy, I know I saw one play, you know, they were scrimmaging. You know, it was like he was about to go down, but he put his shoulder down. He ran the DB clean over for, for like two yards. And then next thing I know, the whole sideline just jumped up because he he's not a, a, a tall guy. He's just short and stout. He's short and bulky. And so to see that, Dan Warner was like, we're going to need that. We're going to need a running back that's going to fight for those extra yards. And he feels like he has a good set of running backs this year, along with Akeem Judd, Jordan Wilkins, who are also physical backs as well. They're going to, to take a lot of pressure off the passing game where Kelly won't have to pass as much and is going to be able to shove it down defense's throats with two to maybe three running backs. So, yeah, Eric Swinney, yeah, I, I feel like if, if you're not uh, Robin Kondichi size, you're in trouble because he's going to run you over. I mean, he just, I mean, he's he's really telling these guys, like, hey, y'all know what y'all have to do. Y'all know we lost a lot of guys. That's why he recruited so hard. That's why he had to get this this big class in him because he knew what was leaving. You know, he just told the guys they're returning. And y'all know what y'all going to have to do. Y'all know you're going to have to step up. Y'all know you're going to have to be leaders this year. You won a leader last year where this is your chance. You know, and a lot of pressure is on any college football team that loses a lot of guys that, that you have relied on for the past three seasons. Um, you know, a, a lot is going into this year because Chad Kelly's coming back. Arguably, out of all the SEC schools, Ole Miss doesn't have to worry about a quarterback. You know, but they have to worry about more on the defensive side. So that's where – most of the question marks for Ole Miss lies at the defensive side. You know, who's going to be there at? right now? Gates has taken on the leadership role. Um, but who else? You know, for Dahl, you know, for Dahl Brown, you know, he's going to be another guy, you know, Ole Miss is going to have to lean on for leadership. And I think, and they have mentioned that he's ready. He's mentally preparing himself for a long year of leading a lot of freshmen, a lot of guys that didn't get to play much last year. So, you know, there is a lot of pressure, but Freeze felt like his freshmen, returning players have handled it well to the point where they won't slip up and have a mishap because of the because of the pressure that's being surrounded around this team. Because, you know, like like I said, this team is just – they're talented, very talented. You know, from top to bottom, there's a lot of potential in this freshman class. There's a lot of potential with these guys that haven't played, played much last year. You know, but I, I just I feel like there shouldn't be much pressure on this team. This team will win nine to ten games, possibly eleven. It's gonna be tough for them. But I, I think people should to try to try to lay back off the pressure and and just just let those guys go out there and play. That's how I feel. So fair to say the motivation or the theme going into spring ball is next man up. Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah, right. I, I, it's fair to say the next man up. Thanks. Appreciate it, Courtney. Right, no problem. All right, yeah, uh, I think uh, one of the key things you touched on there, Courtney, is from a national perspective, uh, when they just gloss over these teams, they look at the quarterback position. Obviously, it's the most important on the field, but maybe give a little bit too much leverage to that position. And Chad Kelly coming back in the 4,000 yards passing and uh, don't look at the trenches and look at the defense. And, and, and so from a national perspective, Ole Miss is supposed to be a, a serious contender in the SEC, not saying that they won't, but obviously you're talking about the three 
possibly the three best players at their specific positions leaving and uh, all that uh, talent going out the door. A very top-heavy team when it comes to talent, so it'll be interesting to see what the Rebels have coming up. Uh, Courtney Smith from uh, Rebel Walk joining us this week. So your initiation to uh, SEC Breakdown. So thanks so much for joining us, Courtney. Oh, man, I, I hope you guys bring me back on. And, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I we will need to do that. Uh, you're certainly laying down the knowledge, so we appreciate that, helping us out here during spring practice. All For right, sure. man, you guys, you guys take care.